what's up folks and welcome to another episode of Bees Bites. So as you probably guessed by the title we're going to talk about uh, jerk baits today a little bit. So there's a lot of I wouldn't say controversy but anytime you say that mega bass isn't the best jerk bait you get a lot of flack for it. Um, I am not a fan. Uh, maybe it's a little bit because of the price tag. Uh, maybe it's uh, because of the performance. Um, you know, I think for me, it's it's performance. Um, I, I guess it's a little bit of the price tag too. Um, but when I think about what I get out of a Mega Bass that I don't get out of one of these, it's nothing. I've fished them both in the same water same color, same time of year, and have outfished the Mega Bass with one of the ones I'm going to show you, uh, five to one. No joke. Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't work better in certain parts of the country, um, but for me here, um, what I'm going to show you today is hands down, bang for the back, bang for the back, can't even talk today guys, bang for the buck, the most, uh, the best producing jerk bait that I've ever used. Um, you know, I've got two, I've got, I mean, when it comes to jerk baits, I'm a jerk bait fanatic. Uh, I've got probably 20 different brands of jerk baits, um, which is crazy considering I only throw two of them. Uh, I should get rid of the rest, but I just can't bear to do it. I've got Rapala's. I don't hate them. Um, I've got Yozuri. I don't hate them. Um, but for me, the way I fish and the way they perform, these two are the ones that take the cake. So the first one is the Ricky Klon RCSTX. Some people call it the Monster Bass Knockoff. Uh, I call it a freshwater bass killer. This thing is an amazing piece of equipment. Um, you know, I fished two different versions of this. The suspending, which actually isn't technically a suspending, it's kind of a slow sinking. Um, and then I fish the floating version. So, um, this one gets down to about six feet, um, which f for a lot of the areas that I fish, um, that's the perfect depth. Uh, but if I want to fish a little bit deeper, I'm going to go to the Smithwick and this one happens to be wrapped, uh, in a crank wraps. Uh, this is a, a black crappie or white crappie. I think, I think it's white crappie. I can't remember. Um, just because the paint jobs on these weren't all that great, uh, and Crank Wraps puts out a hell of a product. This has been on there for three years uh, and doesn't even really have a nick in it. Um, but this is the Rogue Elite 8. Um, and then, uh, so this gets down, I can get it down to about 10 feet if I need to. Um, and then you can go with the, the 10, which gets down to about 12 to 14 feet ballpark. Um, but I think the action on these, this, this one specifically gets down quick, um, which is something I really, really like about it. Um, whereas some of the other ones, like even this guy takes, you know, a few snaps to get it down, um, to that maximum depth. But, you know, when I, when I'm picking a jerk bait, um, a lot of it for me is feel. And I think, you know, any fisherman will tell you, um, it, if it doesn't feel right on the end of your rod, um, you're not going to throw it. Uh, and these two feel awesome, uh, catch a ton of fish on them. Uh, when you, when you think about setup. Uh, I run them on, uh, I like a shorter rod, so um, anywhere from like a 6.9 to a 7.1, somewhere in that range is what I like to throw them on. Uh, medium action, uh, fast tip, uh, really gets that snapping. Uh, case in point, uh, we were out fishing a tournament, and a buddy of mine, um, we both had the same jerk bait on, I'm catching fish, he's not. Uh, all because of the rod. He wasn't imparting the right action on the jerk bait. Uh, and instead of when you snap it, this thing is designed when you snap it on slack line, mind you, it's gotta be snapped on slack, slack line. It's the best way to uh, work a jerk bait. Um, when you snap it, they're supposed to just kind of dart side to side and not pull forward too much. Um, because of the action on his rod, he's yanking it through the water instead of just snapping it back and forth, right? Um, you know, you get one of these things to turn around on itself. 
if there's a fish there following it, it's going to eat it. Um, so rod selection is super important. Um, like I said, I use a, a, a lighter rod, uh, medium action, fast tip, uh, short, um, just prevents me from slapping the water or slapping the boat. Um, and, uh, most of those jerk bait rods that you find that are true jerk, jerk bait rods are going to be that shorter category, you know, six, nine to seven foot, uh, maybe a seven, two, you can get away with. Um, but, uh, just a fantastic way to work them. And uh, when you think about the retrieve, that really varies depending on the time of year, right? So when the water's colder, you're going to retrieve it slower. You might do a little snap, snap, snap. You know, when the water's really cold, um, they can be deadly. Um, you might, you might snap it and wait 10 seconds. Um, whereas when the water heats up and they start getting more active and they're really chasing, um, a super aggressive retrieve. So for instance, uh, if I'm fishing smallmouth and they're really feeding heavy, I don't pause it at all. I give it some violence, uh, some violent snaps, uh, and just constantly do it. Same thing with largemouth, just constant snaps. Um, sometimes that triggers them, you know, when they're already in that mood, right? Um, when they're just out opportunity feeding, I, my general cadence is, uh, two pops, pause, pop it again, two pops, pause, pop it again. Um, not a whole lot of time in between them. Um, but just enough to get that side to side cadence, right? The best thing I can tell people that are starting out with jerk baits is, uh, when you hit a body of water and you're not sure what kind of mood the fish are in, uh, it's super important to play with that cadence. So you might go two pops, pause, pop. You might go three pops, pause. You might just do one pause, one pause, one pause. What I tell people is whatever cadence you choose, do 10 or 12 casts with it, 15 casts with it, and then do 10 or 15 casts doing it a different with a different cadence, 10 or 15 casts with a different cadence until one hits it. Uh, if you can repeat that, there you go. You found the pattern, repeat that throughout the day and you're going to get a ton of bites. What happens to a lot of people is they don't pay attention to what cadence they're snapping these at. And the fish is the, the bites inconsistent. Well, it's because they want it a certain way. And if you're not doing it that certain way, every single time, you're probably going to miss some bites. Uh, so play with that cadence, get the right rod, you know, from a gear ratio perspective for a reel, I'm not overly burnt on it. Um, the, I tell most people get a faster gear ratio reel. And, and there's one reason for that. Um, you know, for up here anyways, and I'm sure, you know, I haven't fished in California and Florida and, you know, wherever else, but, um, for here, uh, I'd say 70% of the time they hit that thing and run right at me. That's the craziest thing. So you want something that can pick that line up real quick. So a faster gear ratio reel really helps. Um, and then just remember on the, on the, on the retrieve, you're snapping the slack line, right? So you need that slack in the line to get the jerk bait to do what it needs to do. Um, if you snap it on tight line, all you're doing is pulling that jerk bait through the water, completely ruining what it's made to do. So it takes practice. Um, probably not the easiest technique in the world, uh, but definitely not the hardest. Um, and I tell you, if you, if you really want to catch some good fish, find a nice day, um, you know, clear water is going to be the key. Um, one of the best keys anyways. Uh, I don't throw a lot of jerk baits when the water's a little bit muddied up. It just, it's, it's a visual lure, right? They need to see it. Um, it's got some rattles. It makes a little bit of noise, but it's a visual lure. They need to see it doing that darting motion to really get them pent up and, and go chase it. Um, and I like a little bit of chop on the water. Um, you know, raining. Um, doesn't have to be bright, sunny day. Um, you know, if there's too much wind, I probably won't throw it. Uh, even though it's probably just as deadly. I just don't throw it when there's a ton of wind. Um, but I like a little bit of chop on the water. Water needs to be pretty clear. You know, I tell you, you know, one to three feet, one to four feet, uh, visibility. And when it gets real muddy, like it can in some lakes around the country, um, they just don't produce well, like I said, because they're, uh, it's a visual lure. They need to see it. Um, it's not like a crankbait where you're bouncing it off a cover and, 
uh, making a lot of ruckus with it. Um, you get those little rattles on the tops, but otherwise it's just sitting there, just kind of suspending in the water. Um, so that's kind of the Jerkbait 101. Um, I think we'll talk, uh, uh, next episode we're going to talk about shaky heads. I had one of the viewers had some questions about how to fish the shaky head. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, I've got some pretty good footage I filmed this weekend, uh, using the shaky head specifically. So we'll, uh, we'll add some of that footage in. Um, I don't have any footage of uh, me throwing this, but there is a video. Um, I think it was the Eastern Washington Bass Open uh, last October uh, where I caught damn near every single fish on a jerkbait. Um, when they're firing on them, it is fun. But anyways, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's little uh, quick video. Um, tomorrow is a new day and a new video. So don't forget to share, like, comment, subscribe. We got a giveaway going on as soon as we hit 600 subscribers. We're going to give away a whole bunch of soft plastics and a couple of special surprises. One from Elite Angler and one from... Uh, I can't remember. I'm giving away a couple extra surprises that I'm not going to show you. Uh, we're just going to send them out when we, uh, when we get a winner. So thanks again, guys. We'll see you soon. And uh, tight lines.